Hello my dear students. Today you can familiarize another branch of biology, the morphology. You have learned what is morphology. Okay, it is the study of external characteristics of an organism. So, if we speak animal morphology, morphology of animals, it shows great difference from phylum porifera to phylum caudata. Okay, you know phylum porifera is having, members are having cylindrical body and it is spongy body with number of pores all over the body surface. The next phylum, Nidarians also have a primitive cylindrical body with a cavity inside. Okay, likewise members of every phylum show difference in their morphology. Okay, if it's phylum arthropoda, they are having cephalothorax, then thorax like body parts. If it's phylum mollusca, you know they are with shells. Okay, then anyway the phylum chordata members are advanced with some more modified features. With appendages, hands, legs, central body like. Okay, anyway just listen to the presentation, the slides and understand in very brief the animal morphology. The first phylum, Porifera, consists of sponges which are cylindrical with many pores all over the body surface. Nidarians have cylindrical body with tentacles and having stringing cells on the tentacles. Tenophora consists of comb jellies which have comb plates and some are with bioluminescent property. Platyhelminthes are flat worms which are seen very flat. Whereas the next phylum, Ashhelminthes consists of organisms which are round worms. Mainly they are endoparasites in our body. Annelids are having segmented body like earthworm, leech, etc. The next phylum, Arthropoda, consists of insects, crabs, ants like they have segmented legs. Ar mollusca, the phylum mollusca consists of a shell over the body and a soft body inside. Echinodermata members are with spiny derma. There are many spines on the skin. The next group, Hemichordata, consists of members which have proboscis, collar and trunk portions on the body. Chordata consists of numerous classes and all members show different morphology which you can study better in separate classes. Thank you. So I think the things are clear for you. With number of examples, every phylum, its morphology and all characteristics we are going to study in a chapter, Animal Kingdom in plus one itself. Then come to plant morphology. Okay, then here I have given a brief sketch of that. I have just shown it here. Here, see, plants, you know, the members are from Talophyta to Angiospermae. Talophyta, Bryophyta, Pteridophyta. Then gymnospermae and angiospermae. In talophyta, how the plant body, the morphology is, you know, it's not having, the plants are not having true roots, leaves and stems. Instead, they have talus. That's why the name, talophyta. Okay, that means there is no any organization of body into roots, stems and leaves. Okay, okay, here this is simply talus, a filamentous or talloid body. You will study it, expand it later. Anyway, if it's higher plants, you know the way of very well developed, okay, different types of stems, roots, uh, leaves, etc. Are they? Okay, let's have a glance on that. Hmm? So, here you see, if there's a seed, hmm, a seed on germination, that means the seed is usually germinating in soil with the help of oxygen and water, it can germinate. Okay, after a period of dormancy, 
every seed germinate to produce a plant. Okay, if the seed is viable, okay, if it's fertile, there are uh, other kind of sterile seeds also. Okay, anyway, th this is a fertile seed. It is germinating means a seed consists of what? A seed consists of a covering, seed cot, and an embryo inside. You know that the seed consists of an embryo inside. Okay, this embryo inside the seed is having a central axis which has radical and plumule. You have studied it. So, radical is the part of the embryo which develops to the root system of the plant. It is a radical which develops to root system. And it is the plumule of the embryo which develops to the shoot system. So, morphologically, a plant, I mean a flowering plant, a higher plant is having two major parts, two systems in the body. The underground, mostly underground root system and mostly above ground or shoot system. Why I say mostly? It's because there are some stem, I mean modifications which are underground. Anyway, the aerial part we can say the shoot system, the underground part we can say the root system. The root system develops from radical, the shoot system develops from plumule. Okay, then just listen, the root if you are discussing about the root, you know the roots are of different types like tap roots, fibrous roots. Okay, tap roots are drawn here with the main primary root and uh, secondary tertiary roots. Fibrous roots means all over fibrous like fiber like roots, monocots. Monocots are having fibrous root, you know. Dicots are having tap roots, you know. Okay, the root we will discuss and elaborate in plus one. Just understand the root is of different types like tap root system, fibrous root system and it is again of different type like for meant for storage. Some roots are edible. Okay, so it's meant for storage and it's meant for other purposes like breathing. Okay, in mangroves, so, uh, roots help in above ground they appear and help in breathing. Breathing roots are there. All details we can solve later. Now just listen to the shoot system. The shoot system, it has a main stem. Okay, usually stem is above ground, whereas there are stems which are underground. Okay, you know stem modifications like ginger, then potato, these are all stem but underground, modified for storage, which are edible also. Okay, anyway, stem, there are underground stem also, mostly they are aerial. Modifications also we discuss later. The main duty of the stem is to transport all the things to uh, uniformly to all parts. Okay. Anyway, the next part, leaf. Hmm? You know the leaf has the most important significance in the plant body because it helps in photosynthesis. Since it's green in color, since it's contained chlorophyll, it can perform photosynthesis and give the food equally to all parts. Okay. So the leaf is again of different types. Simple leaf. If there is one leaf in one okay axle, that is called simple leaf. Compound leaf is there, you know, curry leaf, you know, moringa, you know, what does, um, I mean, mayflower, the tamarind, I mean, dissected leaves, they have compound leaf. They are going to study in detail later. Anyway, just understand, leaf is of different types like simple leaf, compound leaf, okay? Hmm? Then, another important thing, the leaves arrangement also is different. Arrangement of leaves on the stem is different in different plants. It is called a phyllotaxy. Hmm? We will learn it later. Anyway, phyllotaxy is the arrangement of what? Leaves on stem. What is the term? Phyllotaxy. Okay, just keep, in the, keep that word in mind. That's enough. Then, just next case. The, and the important part of a plant. Okay, a flowering plant, most important part we can say it's flower. Okay, flower is a reproductive part of the plant. It helps in the production of seeds. It helps in maintaining life generation after generation. It's a reproductive part, propagule. Okay, that means the flower, you know, there are many parts you have studied it already. That means sepal, okay, world of sepals, what's it called? Calyx, world of petals called corolla. 
Okay, we will discuss later. Then the two important roles in a flower is a male part and its female part. The male part is stamen and the female part is carpal. Okay, and the female part is having an ovary here, a basal bulged portion. The carpal is having a basal bulged ovary there. That ovary consists of what? Uh, small, I mean, small globular structures called ovules. Sometimes maybe one. Okay, one or many ovules are present inside the ovary. So understand the female part of a flower is called uh, carpal. Under the name is pistil. Okay, and the name of carpal is pistil. Okay, what is it? It's a female part of a flower. It consists of a basal bulge ovary and many, one or many ovules inside it. I have just shown it here. Okay, then why we discuss it here is, then this ovary, when the flower droops, hmm, this part will be as such on the plant. Have you noticed it? This is actually developing to the fruit. That means the entire ovary, entire ovary is developing to fruit. So the fruit is formed from ovary. Understand? The fruit of a plant is formed from which part of the flower? It is from the ovary. Okay? Then what happened to the ovules inside? If ovary is changing to the fruit, the ovules will change to what? To the seeds. So the seeds are formed from the ovules. Did you get me? So keep in mind, the flower is the reproductive part of a plant. It is later forming seeds, fruits and seeds. And which part of the flower is forming the fruit? It is the ovary. Okay, female part ovary after fertilization is changed to fruit. Then which part of the flower is changing to seeds? Inside the ovary, the ovules are there. The ovules are changed to seeds. Are you okay? Hmm? Then listen to me here. So you have learned fruit is formed from ovary. Then seed is formed from uh, ovules. Then here I have uh, just written one more thing. Inflorescence. Have you heard it earlier? Hmm? Most of the flowers you can see on the plant as clusters. As a group, a bunch of flowers. Solitary flowers, single flowers are there. But more than that we can see usually small flowers are aggregated to one large inflorescence. So we define inflorescence as the arrangement of flowers on a floral axis. Simply we can understand it's a cluster of flowers, a group of flowers. Okay, so flower is a reproductive part of a plant. It can be seen single or if it is clustered into groups, I mean as a group, it is known as what? Inflorescence. Different types of inflorescence also you are going to study later. That time we will discuss. Now just have the idea about General idea about the plant morphology and also the animal morphology. In plus one textbook, you are not studying much about the animal morphology. But where you are just learning one chapter, structural organization in animals. There you learn the internal characteristics along with simple morphology terms. Okay, then whereas you have a separate chapter for plant morphology, morphology of angiosperms. There you learn all these details. Okay, that I will see again. And then we will just discuss another branch of biology in the next class. Okay, thank you.